Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Sami Hotels Limited Q1 FY25 Earnings Conference Call. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company which are based on the beliefs, opinions and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantee of future performance and involve risk and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. As a reminder, all participant line will be on listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then 0 on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Jhakinwal, MD and CEO of Sami Hotels Limited. Thank you and over to you sir. Good morning ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Sami Hotels earnings call for the quarter ending June 30th, 2024. Um, I have with me my senior colleagues, Yana Das, who is EVP and Head of Investments, Rajat, who is uh, Chief Financial Officer, and Nakul Manakdala, who is the VP of Investments. Uh, we also have on call our investor relation advisors, strategic growth advisors. We have uploaded our Q1 FY25 financials and presentation on the exchanges, and I hope everybody had an opportunity to go through the same. To begin with, I will request Rajat to give us a summary of our financial performance after which I will give you a small brief on business and then open the floor for Q&A. That's it, over to you. Thank you, Ashish. And good morning, everyone. It gives me immense pleasure to announce Sami's financial performance for the quarter ending June 30th, 2024. Our asset income, which captures the revenue generated from our hotels, stood at INR 251 crores, registering a year-on-year -year growth of 31% as compared to the same quarter last year. This is driven by good same-store growth and the addition of ACIC portfolio. Same-store assets saw a strong RESPAR growth of 13% year-on-year. This helped us maintain 7% total revenue growth even after a muted quarter of FNB, especially MICE. Our asset EBITDA, which captures total level profitability stood at INR 25 crores, registering a year-on-year -year growth of 32% as compared to same quarter last year. Asset EBITDA margin stood at 37.7%, being diluted by the impact of ACIC portfolio, which stood at 35% for the quarter. With ACIC portfolio conversion to managed hotel under married Coupled with the integration benefits with our existing Marriott portfolio, we should see material margin improvement over the coming quarters. We have seen material reduction in net corporate GNA and ESOP expenses at INR 1.2 crores and INR 4.4 crores respectively. On the basis of this, I am happy to report that our reported consolidated EBITDA stood at INR 89 crores, registering an 88% year-on-year growth as compared to same quarter last year. Consolidated margin too have reached 34.6% with material headroom for further growth. Depreciation expense and finance cost has been stable at INR 30 crores and 56 crores respectively, leading to a reported patch of INR 4 crores. Given that Q1 is seasonally of the weakest quarter of the financial year, we should see material growth impact over the coming quarters. From a capital structure perspective, our net debt as on June 30th, 2024, stood at about INR 1,860 crores with a cost of debt of 9.7%. With continued growth in our EBITDA on the same store basis coupled with incremental EBITDA from our growth projects, we believe our balance sheet would continue to remain strong I'm happy to report that ICRA has updated our credit rating to A- stable, which is a testament to the steps we have taken to improve our capital structure and PNL. With that, I shall now request Ashish to take us through the market and the business updates. Uh, thank you, Rajat. There was just one slip of tongue. The asset EBITDA was 95 crores, uh, which was erroneously, I think, it was a slip of tongue to 25. Oh, so sorry for that. Uh, thank you, Rajat. Uh, I think we remain fairly uh, confident and excited about 
both near term and long term, uh, and that stems from several factors, both external macro and internal. On the external front, I think we are fairly upbeat about how our core markets continue to grow. Rapid expansion of commercial office space and aviation market in India will continue to boost demand for business travel and associated uh, lodging services. We believe that the headroom for growth in our core market remains to be long term and very promising. Our portfolio is well located to take advantage of this macro trend. This reflects in delivering strong same store revenue growth. In the last reported quarter, our same store assets, which excludes the recently acquired ACIC portfolio and the Caspia Pro in Goethe Noida, which is under renovation, delivered a 13% rest bar growth in Q1 FY25, driven by robust demand as demonstrated in the office space net absorption and aviation growth in our core markets. Our four core markets of Bangalore, Hyderabad, Delhi, NCR, and Pune captured 67% of the 9 million square feet of office absorption delivered in Q1 FY25. Uh, we probably will discuss this in Q&A, but these were the four markets which also delivered very strong uh, respite growth year on year for the first quarter. On the aviation front, passenger growth trends, uh, trends continued with 72 million air passengers in the quarter, with all major cities growing in high single digits growth. We, however, saw a weaker quarter with respect to my business, its consequential impact on FNB and overall revenue growth, which was lower than the actual rest power growth. However, with elections out of the way, um, we expect this to be fully recovered in coming quarters. If it are margins for the same store assets expanded by 80 basis points year on year to 40% in what is seasonally the weakest quarter and should improve over the next few quarters. With better realization from food and beverage, higher overall revenue and strong flow throughs to EBITDA, we believe that we have significant room for EBITDA expansion on the same store basis. We are also quite excited about the ongoing and planned renovation and or rebranding opportunities within our existing portfolio, which is and has been core to our strategy. Uh, we have demonstrated track record in successfully re-rating the performance levels of our assets through our products and brand level intervention. We are currently renovating our 137 room Caspia Pro in Greater Noida uh, and rebranding it to Holiday and Express, which is scheduled to open in October this year. Uh, Greater Noida tends to be a very strong market in H2, and this hotel will be open to benefit uh, for that period. We've also signed the agreements with Marriott to renovate and rebrand the two ACIC portfolio assets in Pune and in Jaipur, uh, totaling 330 rooms. Uh, these will be converted into courtyard by Marriott in Pune and a tribute portfolio hotel by Marriott in Jaipur. This will move the assets from uh, where we classify them currently, which is upper mid scale, to an upscale segment and therefore materially re-rate average rate profile and EBITDA potential of these assets. Additional, uh, additional renovation plans to upgrade rooms and facilities in high frequency Pune, Sheraton, Hyderabad, Fairfield by Marriott, Hyderabad, and Four Point Vizac will further drive incremental revenue growth from these hotels. And of course, we have signed a management contract with Marriott to convert the ACIC portfolio, even the other four which are not being rebranded, to manage hotels from the current franchise. This, coupled with integration of the asset with our existing network of married hotels, shall create operating efficiencies and enhance margins across our upper mid-scale portfolio. Finally comes our growth through inventory expansion. We have set a target of delivering about 10 to 15% inventory cager over the years. As of now, we are scheduled to open 165 new rooms in Calcutta, and Bangalore between September and November of this year under the Holiday Inn Express brands. Addition of 22 apartments in high frequency Pune will commence uh, soon as planned. We are also very happy to inform you that we have identified the opportunity to add 54 rooms at Sheraton Hyderabad by converting some underutilized FNB and third party leased office spaces. As you know, Hyderabad is a very strong performing market and being able to add 54 rooms uh, is highly accretive. Uh, seeing strong performance uh, uh, of the hotel in Sri Pramudu, which is Fairfield by Marriott, uh, we are starting to plan the addition of 80 rooms there, uh, and we expect that the total incremental revenue from the additions that I've just spoken about will be in the zip code of about 70 crores if we take FY24 rep bars. 
So all of these growth opportunities are internal to the portfolio. Uh, most of them are underway and completely in our control. In addition to these internal growth opportunities, we also have a very highly visible and actionable pipeline of both acquisition turnarounds and long-term variable leases. Uh, these have the potential to add at least 25% EBITDA on FY24 pro forma basis. Um, and they will continue to remain highly capital efficient and in the core markets that we operate in. We'll keep you updated as we make progress on this. The combination of all the above, which is same store growth, renovation rebranding opportunities within our existing portfolio, inventory addition in our core markets within our existing portfolio, and then last but not the least, addition of new inventory, continue to drive a sustainable compounding of revenues in EBITDA and create a significant value for our stakeholders. With this, I shall open the floor for Q&A. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Karan Khanna from Ambit Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, Ashish, Rajat and team. Uh, thanks. Uh, just a couple of questions from my side. Uh, firstly, if we talk about the ACIC portfolio, uh, where your asset EBITDA margins uh, versus the rest of the portfolio asset EBITDA margins, the gap has reduced from about 770 bips to 320 bips uh, this quarter. Uh, but when do you expect this to converge? And uh, as a follow-up, uh, what kind of EBITDA accretion do you expect because of all the renovation and rebranding activities that you're taking up in FI26, uh, 2526 from the ongoing project? Uh, so, Karan, on ACIC, uh, you're absolutely right. We have moved the margins materially from where we had acquired them. Uh, we expect that the, by the end of the fiscal year, which is in quarter three and quarter four of the current fiscal year, you will see the EBITDA margins of ACIC converge with that of our same store portfolio, which is in the zip code for about 40%. That's the first part of, of, the, of your question. The second in terms of incremental potential from, so there are really two buckets current. One is the renovation and rebranding, and the second actually is the addition of inventory. So uh, from renovation and rebranding, which is currently in the near term is really the Caspia Pro into Holiday and Express, and in the long term is the two Jaipur assets. Uh, in the greater Noida, actually, if you ask me, while we call it renovation and rebranding, uh, the contribution of that hotel to our EBITDA over the last six months has been almost not zero. So uh, greater Noida rebranding and reopening in October will almost be tantamounting to adding new inventory and will bring the full uh, EBITDA potential to our books. Uh, the renovation of Pune and Jaipur. So Pune starts around uh, January 2025, the renovation. We expect the renovation, and we're not shutting the hotel for renovation. So we'll continue to take benefit of the income coming from the hotel during the course of the renovation. But we expect the renovation to be completed uh, over the course of the next three or four quarters. And subsequent to that, as we, ex uh, we have disclosed in our presentation, we at least expect expecting a 15% jump in red part just this is FY24 numbers, right? Uh, so if you see, uh, we're expecting approximately, and current if we just take a ballpark, uh, you know, that would re-rate the EBITDA by almost uh, nine, crores. Uh, nine crores from the current. Uh, so FY24 was about 17 crores, 17 and a half crores. They expect that number to be in 25 to 27 crores. If you don't take any rate growth in that market, just take the FR correction, right? Jaipur is a slightly longer project. We are starting to plan Jaipur today, so I would expect that Jaipur will take additional quarter or so to get delivered. But the upside in Jaipur is almost to the extent of 50%, because this asset currently in that market is quite underperforming. So we think these three, uh, Greater Noida will be a complete new addition, even though it's a rebranding, and Pune and Jaipur have a significant bit upside between those two assets. Sure, this is helpful, Ashish. Uh, second question, uh, while you uh, spoke about you know potential acquisitions and opportunities to do variable leases, uh, 
uh, in the past we've also spoken about uh, asset recycling uh, so any update there uh, any discussions uh, with potential buyers that you would like to share uh, on 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 that front yeah so that is something that we uh, as you know as a large owner of multiple assets we will constantly look at recycling a capital to make sure it's deployed at places where we think it's got the best return uh, we are discussing uh, potential recycling of at least three of our assets uh, but as i've always uh, mentioned that secondary market in india tends to be slightly shallow and time consuming so we'll not be able to make any promises but yes we are making progress on at least three assets uh in terms of asset recycling sure and lastly on caspia new delhi and uh, four points by sharit and vishaka patnam uh, any update on the rebranding of the same and the brand and when do you expect that to operationalize so uh, caspia delhi current we already have a contract signed with uh, marriott for a pay field by marriott uh we have not yet started the work on this asset uh, this is one of the assets that we would consider you know uh, to be part of our asset recycling strategy and that's why we built it for innovation uh wisac uh, you know is an asset where there is no rebranding it's just improvement in the guest rooms uh, we have done we have completed the planning exercise i think by the end of the year we'll have the mockups completed and then we'll start the work on that hotel great uh, I'll, i'll come back in the queue thanks and all the best thank, thank you. you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of natraj shankar from dsp mutual funds please go ahead hi uh, thanks for the opportunity i have two questions one is um, has two subparts uh, the credit rating upgrade that we got recently what is the nf benefit that we expect uh, from interest cost point of view that's one uh, and uh, related to that is the Uh, current debt that you have and the maturity profile of it would you require any funding um, how do you plan that uh, that's the first part of a question and the second is if you take hyderabad pune and delhi as a market um, why there is every reason to be optimistic on the tourism uh, in general uh, how do you think about supply um, across tiers both in the low bid mid and the upscale over the next two to three years and this is most likely longest question in terms of supply uh, could you just uh, these two will be very helpful thanks yeah so i think uh, and i'll ask rajat to chip in uh, but our interest rates as you would notice have been constantly falling uh, coming down at this point they're at about 9.7 percent uh, both with improvement in the cash flows uh overall market sentiment and of course that's reflected in the credit rating we think this will come up 9.5% in the near term uh that's really uh, not a lot of effort on our side it's just weighted average in fact we still have some high cost debt which we are waiting for the lock ins to get to expire subsequently which we'll be able to refinance them so that will come down uh, to sub 9.5% uh to uh we really don't have other than one uh ncd which is maturing in 2027 uh jan 2027 uh and which we are fairly confident of uh, re- uh you know refinancing prior to that other than that we really don't have maturities all of our debt is long term uh, the total repayments due over the next 12 months is about 50 odd crores right 50 55 crores So as far as repayments are concerned we have a very strong uh, profile of repayments over the course of the next 10 to 12 years only the maturity due is in Jan 2027 which gives us adequate time to refinance that right uh, so that's part one part two in terms of supply uh, demand and supply right actually the three markets that you mentioned that Raj is Hyderabad Pune and Delhi uh, are the three markets which perhaps are seeing amongst the large peers the lowest supply growth um, you know pune is almost negligible uh, circa 1 1.5% kegar if at all hyderabad is in the zip code of maybe 3 3.5% supply growth a lot of it is actually delayed and not expected to come online anytime soon uh, and delhi tends to be very micro market driven uh, so you will see some supply coming in aero city uh, but gurgaon which is where our assets are mostly Uh, and especially the mature parts of gurgaon are seeing almost negligible new supply come in right so as we constantly mentioned that we are seeing very solid demand growth i mean at least let's go back to 
the fact that just one quarter we saw 9 million square feet of office space getting absorbed and 72 million passengers flying through Indian airports. That's sort of a size for demand compared to a supply growth of 2, 3, 4, 5 percent will ensure that the operating performance for hotels remains very stable and we get an opportunity to therefore yield it to our advantage over the course of the next few years. I'll take a pause, allow you to have any follow-on question if you have on this. Great, this is very helpful. Um, and uh, could you also touch on the Bombay, the new Bombay side, um, um, one, one part of supply demand, Mumbai and new Bombay. And when you said you have some high cost debt, uh, out of the 2,200 approximate number, what would be the high cost number of debt and what is the percentage rate on that? If you could, uh, that would be helpful. Thanks. So the current uh, debt that we have, which is uh, high cost, is actually, you know, there is one loan that we have about the NCD that we talked about, about 380 crores. And then there is a small loan that we have from another institution, about 60 crores. Uh, the ROI that we are paying uh, is blended in the range of about 11, 11.5% on both these put together. And uh, as Ashi said, we're fairly confident of actually getting these refinanced in the near future. So about 440 crores uh, of the 2,100 crores to 150 gross debt is we are holding at about 11, 11.5%, while the overall average is 9.7. So that actually gives you a direction of where our cost of debt actually is. So as we refinance these two, uh, we are fairly confident of bringing down the average cost of 9.5% on current rate interest rates level. Yeah. Okay, that's helpful. On uh, Mumbai and New Bombay? Uh, so, New Bombay are asking about supply. Yeah, correct. More on the supply side as opposed to demand side. Uh, so, see, New Bombay is seeing some construction activity. Uh, if this market has done exceedingly well, uh, but we will admit the fact that it's a relatively new market. Uh, it is getting a lot of supply interest, but Nantraj, we need to also understand that with the uh, opening of the new Mumbai airport, uh, I think the size of the demand that will get generated in that market will be far in excess of what the supply can cater to as of today. So as of today, we expect about 1,300 rooms is the stated supply in that market. Existing supply is 1,300. We think if everything gets added uh, by end of FY 28, 29, we expect this to go to about 3,000 rooms, right? So that's about doubling, almost doubling of supply. But if you look at from an absolute perspective, 3,000 rooms catering to New Mumbai Airport and whatever is happening in New Mumbai, that's just about Aero City, right? Uh, so when Aero City was created in Delhi, it actually was talking about adding probably slightly more than these rooms and nothing really happened to either Delhi or Aero City. So we okay. do believe Navi Mumbai will remain to be a very, very healthy market. Uh, Mumbai in general will continue to be a strong market, not that we have any operating asset in that market, so we cannot profess to be uh, experts there. But as we track that market, we remain fairly upbeat about that market. And uh, just quick quality follow up if you may. The 1300 rooms that you're talking about is relevant to the mid scale, upscale? Uh, all, 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 all put together. All branded. branded. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, all the best. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Janesh Joshi from Prabhudas Leela Dhar Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I just needed one small uh, clarification. Uh, our current room inventory is about uh, 4,800 rooms and uh, we plan to add about uh, 327 rooms, uh, which would result in an inventory growth of about 7% uh, odd. Uh, but in the PPT, we have mentioned that our guidance is about uh, 10 to 15%. So if you can please uh, help me bridge the gap here. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Dinesh. So uh, you are absolutely right. When we are guiding towards 10 to 15% inventory CAGR over the years, that would include both what we are delivering through our internal growth projects but also the identified pipeline of opportunities that we will expect to close over the next few quarters. To put together, we, we are fairly confident of delivering 10 to 15% inventory taker. Uh, can you, I mean, highlight something about the pipeline of opportunities which you have with you currently? Any, anything which you would want to quantify or any deadline or timeline which you would want to share? Yeah, so I think, as I said, we are, we are current, we have an active pipeline of at least three opportunities that we are tracking. Uh, even if we are able to achieve a 30% success rate on that, 
you know, we believe that we should be able to deliver what we have stated, almost a 25% incremental EBITDA over what we have delivered in FY24. Uh, and when we give these numbers, we uh, t tend to completely ignore any inflation effect or benefit. So we just pick FY24 revenues and FY24 rep parts and kind of multiply that with the inventory we expect to add. So we have a very actionable pipeline. Unfortunately, giving more details without us achieving closing will be inappropriate. But as I said, we remain confident that within the current fiscal year, we will be able to uh, lock in uh, growth opportunities, which will reflect both a combined 10 to 15% inventory kicker, but actually more important, an ability to add 25% to our EBITDA in the coming years over FY24 numbers. Uh, sure. Just to add to that, Janesh, sorry, just to add to that, we, we would like to confirm, however, that these opportunities remain steadfast in our core markets. So I think what's important is to follow discipline while we're wanting to grow. So A, these opportunities are a blend of what we call acquisition and turnarounds and long leases, which means our CAPEX per key tends to be way lower than replacement costs. And two, they remain to be in our core markets, core office markets, where we continue to see both good demand growth and also good rest per growth for our hotels year on year. Uh, sure, sir. One last question from my side. Uh, so our in store rev par growth was about 13% uh, in this quarter, and the other two peers that have uh, reported so far, uh, their in store rev par growth was about 3-4%. Uh, to 4%. So any specific reason beyond the high office absorption example which you highlighted that has uh, led to a double-digit uh, growth in a, in a slightly weaker quarter, so to say? So, Dinesh, it will always be a factor of the market, right? I mean, we've been saying this repeatedly. And I know we tend to focus too much on segments. Uh, and this, uh, we believe that cities sometimes tend to be more important than segments. Uh, if you look at the RESPA growth by cities, right, uh, we've seen Bangalore grow almost at about 17% year on year. No surprises, largest office market uh, in terms of net absorption. Uh, the second highest growth rate was both in Hyderabad and Pune in the zip code of about 16% each. Again, driven by the growth of the office markets. Uh, NCR was at about 10%. And if you look at our portfolio spread, Dinesh, right, almost 70% of our revenues come from Bangalore, Hyderabad, Pune. And if I add NCR, about 80%. So when you have, uh, you know, your presence in markets is continue to have good growth in terms of office space, the weighted impact reflects in the overall portfolio, right? Two, uh, we will also clarify that we don't operate in leisure markets, right? Uh, and therefore, we tend to probably over the years deliver more stable growth rate because leisure markets are the markets which tend to have higher fluctuations between seasonalities. Business hotels also have seasonality, but not to the extent that you will see in leisure markets. Uh, uh, got that. So one small clarification required, uh, given the fact that we are uh, doing some bit of uh, renovation and rebranding. Uh, so how's the renovation capex accounted? I mean, is it capitalized or does it uh, flow through your PNL as uh, repairs and maintenance? The majority of these repairs and renovation that we are doing are actually getting capitalized other than very small work which is being done as a maintenance capex in our existing hotels. Wherever there is a, you know, a rebranding which is happening or maybe addition of the inventory, all of that amount is getting capitalized and will part of our fixed assets. Got it. Uh, thank you so much and all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all the participants, please restrict your question to two per participant. If you have a follow-up question, I would request you to rejoin the queue. The next question is from the line of Nirvana Laha from Badrinath Holdings. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks so much for the opportunity and uh, congrats on a great quarter. Uh, so Ashish, one clarification, you said 25% EBITDA growth on FY24 base. So is that a CAGR or is that like a one-time growth? A uh, one-time. So our, our pro forma asset EBITDA for FY24 was about 400 crores, just a crore short of 400 crores. When we gave a guidance of 25%, which means we're talking about almost, uh, you know, almost like 100 crores of it being added from incremental uh, pipeline that we have visibility of. This is over what timeline? So, you know, it will vary. Uh, we believe that starting this, this incremental EBITDA growth will start coming in FY26. 
but very small stuff. Uh, you know, FY27 onwards, you start seeing this EBITDA growth coming into our BNS. Okay, See, most of our uh, most of our opportunities, actually, all of our opportunities are uh, acquisition or existing assets or near ready assets, right, uh, Nirvana. So we don't see any lag between capex and revenue and EBITDA, uh, other than maybe two or three quarters during which you either complete or renovate the assets. So we have picked up the FI24 rep parts, uh, you know, a basis which if we add this inventory, it will add additional 90 to 100 crores of EBITDA from starting FI27. There could be a small stub in FI26, but honestly, it's more to take it from FI27 onwards. Got it, Ashish. And uh, in terms of the acquisition, given that we are still carrying, uh, you know, substantial debt, so is there any thought uh, right now at this juncture for the company to go for more of an asset life model uh, for, for some time? So, Nirvana, I'll, uh, I think there are uh, three uh, parts to this answer. Number one is we continue to see very strong growth in our EBITDA, if you see, on a year-on-year basis. And, uh, you know, by the end of the current fiscal year, we are fairly confident to generate incremental 225 to 250 crores of free cash. Uh, this is over and above the existing free cash, of about 300 crores that we hold in our books. Uh, and then, of course, you have a 526 coming beyond that, right? So we are building a very strong liquidity position uh, from the current business, which is doing, obviously, uh, you know, we're very satisfied with what it's delivering to us. Obviously, part of this will be used towards continuous deleveraging, or it will reflect in our net debt because of the cash we hold, either two ways, two ways, right? The third is something that Karan kind of asked upfront about asset recycling. Uh, so we believe that some bit of asset recycling will be uh, done, as I, as I fully uh, admitted that asset recycling needs a counterparty, and therefore we are kind of averse to making any uh, firm promises. But it is a stated strategy, and we will deliver on that for sure over a period of time. So part of it will be funded through asset recycling. And last but not the least, I will pick on your one word that you use, asset light. Because we believe in ownership of the PNL, given the operating leverage we are seeing in the market, we actually use a word called capital efficient, which is delivered through our variable long-term leases, where we actually don't end up paying for land and building and we only pay for fitting out the building and very quickly start adding that EBITDA to our overall portfolio. So I think we have balanced, uh, we have a good balance of both uh, stability, uh, safety net, and also growth. And combining all of these factors together, uh, Nirvana, we feel fairly confident that we'll be able to achieve it. So thanks. Uh, just one last question. So if you can tell the OCF we generated for this quarter and your thoughts on one of your peers, exact peers actually, recently uh, did a uh, capital raise and uh, managed to completely deleverage their balance sheet. So I understand this from an investing point of view, it seems like there's a lot of value uh, in, in uh, the, the stock currently. So I'm not suggesting right now. But as part of the roadmap going forward in the next two to three years, uh, as, as management, do you think that's a possibility we would like to consider in terms of raising equity capital, maybe just to clean up the balance sheet? Because in the past, we have faced uh, during COVID etc. a lot of issues due to due to debt. So just these two questions. Thank you so much. Yeah, Vana, we, are a, we are a professionally managed company, which itself should assure everyone that we are here to serve the interest of the broader shareholders. And at any given point of time, if that requires us to take an action, we will not hesitate to do that. If that includes raising capital, so be it. But I will reiterate that as of right now, we have a very strong liquidity. We have seen very good cash being generated by the business. Our growth is a lot internal, which is very capital efficient because most of the capital has already been invested and being carried in form of uh, you know, our current capital employed. Uh, so I think we, we, are, we are very, very confident where we are today, but I will obviously assure you, not that it is needed, that being a professionally managed company, the board will kind of consider what's the best path for the company in due course of time, you know. Uh, you know, one thing we don't do, uh, Nirvana, which I'd like to highlight, is we are a high growth business, which is evident from our revenue and EBITDA growth, not just year on year, but for the last five years. But what we've not been doing, and perhaps we'll start doing, is separating the capital allocated towards growth because unfortunately all of that gets clubbed into a single EBITDA line. Uh, we've, not been, we've not been doing so far, but I hear a lot of comments that we get 
we will start allocating capital towards growth, which will bring near-term EBITDA. So investors have a very clear visibility of how we foresee the balance sheet growing in future. Sir, I see Sandeep, OCF number if you can for quarter one. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, yes. yes. Sorry, the operating cash flow number, Ashish, if you can give that. So, yeah, uh, the, uh, so I'll tell you, uh, just a second. We had about 35 crores of, sorry, 34 crores of operating free cash in the quarter one. Uh, okay, this is after pay down of some debt or is this the operating cash flow? No, this is operating cash. This is a bit of minus interest. We didn't have uh, significant debt repayment in the current quarter. So if really that is being redirected towards mostly our current, in this quarter it went towards CAPEX which was to open the hotels that we have to open in the next quarter or so. Okay. Thank you so much, Ashish. Uh, wish you all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants that you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Pranav Srimal from PINC Wealth Advisory. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, I'm back from the great results. Uh, most of the questions have been answered. Just uh, one last question, sir. Uh, in the coming three quarters, where do we see the demand coming from? In which cities do we see the maximum demand coming from? Uh, uh, Pranav, you've stumped me with this question because the answer is going to be very long, but I'll try and keep it short. So, yes. you know, the quarter three and quarter four have always uh, ended up being very strong quarters. Uh, combination of increased business travel, great season for mice and social events. Uh, you know, so we expect quarter three and quarter four in line with the previous years to remain very strong and robust. I think the demand continues to come from a very active expansion of economic activities across the key large cities, which is then reflected in uh, increasing net absorption of office space more travelers taking to aircrafts in India. You know, if I'm not wrong, 72 million passengers would have been the highest ever. So we are finally beating the pre-pandemic level of passenger movements, right? Uh, and anybody who takes a flight, a percentage of those people end up staying in hotels, right? Uh, so I think we remain fairly upbeat. Uh, we also think that a lot of large events which got deferred in quarter one, and we definitely saw some deferments when we compare it to same period last year, um, you know, elections and also often people ask us what happens in elections that people don't do events is actually the fact that liquor ban applies a day before and after, right? Uh, and just general uh, concerns around, uh, you know, uh, people movement. So we, we've seen some deferment so that we believe some of that MICE events will start to then spread over quarter, quarter two, three, four. Uh, business travel will become strong. Uh, we are seeing good pickup in weekend occupancies. Uh, which is driven by an increase in what we call urban leisure, uh, means people traveling from one city to the other city for uh, sporting events, rock concerts, general, you know, seeing the country. Uh, so I think all of these will kick in to give us a good uh, subsequent quarters and actually few years, if not more than that. And... Uh... Just uh, one last, uh, I might have missed, what was your CAPEX number this year? Our CAPEX number this year. So this year, the total growth CAPEX we are expecting is about 138 crores, correct? Yeah. 138 CR. So this includes the renovation rebranding? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that uh, gets added to the asset or does this start through to the PNL? Uh, no, no, no. This is KPEX. This is KPEX. This is KPEX. So so right? In the uh, the 302 rooms that open between October and November. This includes the addition of rooms in High Street in Pune. This includes conversion of the ACICF franchise to manage. So this includes all of these activities, which, uh, as I said, will uh, be hugely beneficial, and all all are going to be part of a balance uh, asset package. Yes. Got it, sir. Thank you so much. And we support. already incur, uh, just to, uh, Pranav, just to clarify, we already yes. incur a significant amount of maintenance cap uh, expenditure, but that's already a part of a PNL before we report our beta. Mm. So, mm -hmm. so, so that's, that's separate, right? This we are talking about being the capital being deployed to either rebrand 
add inventory or renovate a uh, material renovation in hotels not maintenance okay it's important sir thank you the next question is from the line of pavas from aditya birla mutual fund please go ahead hey ashish could you touch upon how the last few days has been in terms of uh, say occupancy and arr arr for say july and august and if i deep dive into your performance my you, you have a better performance than peers but lot of it is driven by occupancy rather than arr so how is that shaping and how much further you can push the envelope on this particular front so well, you know if left to me i would have definitely talked about july <laughs> because it definitely looks better than quarter 1 but i think the best thing is to hold off for the entire quarter uh, mm. we have seen good uh, recovery in uh, year revenue growth in the last few days which is almost a month now on see right uh, so that's part 1 uh, and that's not a surprise because we did we actually did a deep dive of quarter 1 and we realized that refer was good as expected uh, and you know when you look at occupancy and rate uh, power a lot of time actually when you look at the portfolio level it depends on which asset kicked in which asset you know when uh, you know contributed so sometimes your average rate for the portfolio or a segment will start to move but generally we've seen both rates and occupancies hold pretty good uh, we wanted to be sure that our statement that mys led to the fnb revenue being muted we have done a deep dive and we have realized that it was mice event which did not happen this year relative to last year which has led to a slightly muted fnb performance otherwise i believe our revenue growth on same store would have been closer to 11 12% and not 7 8% really right uh, and which is what we will expect to see in the coming quarters um, in terms that was your first question uh second question going forward i think the occupancy level remain to be pretty stable there will always be some sort of a asset level decision to uh you know play between occupancy and rate but we do continue to believe that you will see and i think we've said it a few times our view is that single uh you know high single digit to early double digit is the refer growth that the market can deliver on a sustainable basis over next several quarters actually right now quarter on quarter you'll see variations when there is a holiday when there is some global political or national level event but we believe we are very well set to deliver high single digit to early double digits in terms of total revenue growth right uh, we had 7% same store in quarter 1 rep par was 13 as we fix fnb we would have gone to about 11 and a half percent which is where we would like to see the rest of the quarter okay and could you give some more color on the segments like upper up scale mid scale uh, up scale how they have trended in last few days uh yeah so i think the growth is across segments uh, but uh, pavar i will reiterate we have always even we have we have been digging deep into the performance levels we have always seen as a factor of the market and not of the segment right uh, iterate several times because i want to give the right point of view to our investors so in the current quarter we are seeing really uh, very very satisfactory growth year on year across all markets uh, minus goa i think which remains to be flattish you know it's not the best time for goa and the rains have been torrential this time Uh, but other than that most markets have remained pretty strong in terms of year on year growth i had a fair quarter one was and across segments okay but anything anything particular about any of the segments uh, which is kind of a different from the rest of the pack no you know not really what we are seeing is that our hotels across segment for instance in hyderabad are doing really well in bangalore they are doing extremely well but in some of the smaller markets we tend to see the growth rate being slightly muted uh, saying i will see my pay bill by marriott and hyderabad doing really really well uh, but that's in line with how sheraton is doing and how holiday inn expresses are doing that so across three segments we are seeing performance of that city remain fairly robust uh, we are seeing uh, good performance in bangalore even though bangalore has always been on a high base uh, but we need to remind people that in bangalore the different micro markets were behaving differently so we've started seeing other macro micro markets like whitefield uh, where a lot of supply came in in the last three years has started to stabilize and show some growth uh, which is also reflected in the uh, the, the peer reporting uh, 
Uh, we are seeing Delhi being remain very stable and growing well. So I think uh, segments, we, not, we cannot really identify a trend that separates one segment from the other. We clearly can find trends between one city to the other city. Okay, great. And earlier also in your communication, you have highlighted quite often that tier two and tier three cities are not kind of a saying, seeing the same buoyancy as the rest of the say a tier one city. Anything changing now? Is it finally kind of going down uh, the curve or uh, still uh, tier two, tier three are not so, in that upswing? So see, I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you respar growth for quarter one compared to same quarter last year. Bangalore 17, Hyderabad 16, NCR 10, Pune 16, Chennai 3, Ahmedabad 10, others 4. You know, so the data tells us that key cities have done well. Chennai has been a bit of a laggard. Uh, within Chennai, actually, we have assets in Sri Prambadur and in the city, and Sri Prambadur continues to outperform and how to the extent that we are intending to add 80 more rooms in that hotel. Uh, but this is the actual data of our portfolio uh, for the last quarter. So you can clearly see the big cities are showing ref bar growth, which are pretty robust. I think small cities are good, uh, but the question is your ability to forecast them with accuracy for the next three to four years, quarter and quarter. You know, that tends to be slightly challenged because of the low inventory base that they have. Bangalore, Hyderabad, Pune, Delhi, Bombay have such large inventory today and solid performance that our ability to forecast those markets tend to be slightly more, uh, I would say, assuring than our ability to do the same for smaller markets. It does not mean those markets are not good or strong. It just means that our the margin of safety, right, is much higher in the big cities for us. I, I can only speak for Sammy. Sure, that helps. Thanks. That's all from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kostuk Pavaskar from Sher Khan by BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. I just need one clarification on slide number 17. Sorry uh, to interrupt you, sir. May I request you to yeah, please 20. use your handset? Yeah, one second. Yeah. Yes. First of all, you're talking about the presentation. Yeah. Hello. Uh, is it better now? Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah, so just for clarification on slide number 17, uh, you have mentioned that you are planning to add 302 rooms and uh, the revenue potential from these rooms is around 25 to 30 crores. Uh, in your initial comment, you mentioned about some 80 crores of revenue potential. Just want to, uh, you know, cons uh, understand those figures uh, in a better term. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. 25 to 30 crores come from the assets that are listed on that slide. And then in addition to that, you mentioned yeah, not going to the timeline series, right? Uh, yeah, it to 16, slide number 16. Uh, so the 25 to 30 only captures the box that is ready to open in the next, I would say, two to three months. The 80 crore number includes addition of rooms to high agency Pune, uh, in incremental rooms in Sri Parambadur, which you would be mentioned there also, right? Okay. And the incremental rooms in Sheraton, Hyderabad, which we have identified recently, and we will give more details for that in the next quarter. Right. Um, uh, just also from uh, the you know a renovation point of view. So, uh, are there any other properties which you are you know going ahead looking forward to renovate? Because I think that is this is kind of a strategy for you to you know get upgradation in terms of you know revenues or in terms of uh, repair. Uh, so going ahead, maybe uh, you know. Uh, 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 in 26, 27, are there any, uh, you know, specific properties you are looking for in uh, So we have given the list of almost all the properties we're intending, and I think this slide captures a lot. So if you see three are already uh, almost in the final stages of being completed. The work has started in high CNC Pune. It's a large asset. It's an upscale asset in a key market. So the total revenue per key added is much higher, honestly. Uh, then we have just disclosed, I think, a month back to the market about a signing management contract for uh, conversion of Pune and Jaipur assets to a higher category. We believe the, the EBITDA from those assets will grow 40 to 50 percent from what it was at 524. Faces the renovation and rebranding without considering the impact of market growth. Right. Uh, the high frequency Pune, we are undertaking some renovations uh, alongside the addition of the rooms which will include it getting a new restaurant, also a gradation of the ballroom where we expect to improve a market share for the social event, 
Similarly, in Sheraton Hyderabad, we're improving the ballroom space for a better market share of the of the of the social events. So there is a fair bit of work that we are undertaking. I had kind of tried summarizing that just the inventory addition will lead to about 75 to 80 crores of incremental revenue. We have mm-hmm. not factored in that the impact of the renovation and rebranding of the hotels that we are undertaking. So that's an exactly. That was my impact. point. Yeah. Because I guess renovation rebranding will add on to whatever the revenue, uh, you know, will be getting from the room addition. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. We have given we have given a refer guidance on where post renovation and rebranding of the two ACIC hotels we expect the refer to be, uh, but we have not really factored that in when we tell you about 70 to 80 crores of incremental revenue. That to clarify is only from incremental inventory being added in our existing portfolio without any acquisition uh, to be made from third parties. Right. Thanks. Thanks for the understanding. And all the best for you. Thank you, Constable. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take that as the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Ashish Jhakanwal, MD and CEO of Sami Hotels, for closing comments. Uh, so we'd like to thank everyone for taking out time today and we did enjoy the line of questions. Uh, uh, In summary, you know, we remain very, very happy uh, and pleased with what we've delivered over the last, I would say, almost uh, four reported quarters post going public. Uh, We believe that this is just a warm-up as far as the portfolio is concerned. The integration of ACIC portfolio is going exactly as planned. The renovation and rebranding of the new inventory is going exactly as planned. Uh, you know, core to what we do, we've identified more opportunities within our existing portfolio without looking outwards. Uh, and as we try and fruitify uh, the external growth opportunities, we believe that we will set SAMI for, for success, not just in the near term, but also in the long term. So we look forward to continuing to engage with all of you. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you so much, everybody. On behalf of SAMI Hotels Limited, we conclude this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.